Hello. Today I'm going to go through a tutorial of doing some simple raster conversions using the GDAO tool and I'm going to be doing that on the University of Edinburgh servers but this should work if you've got access to a Linux machine. Um, if you want to get onto an NX server or some windowing operation that allows you to access a Linux terminal you can read this tutorial here number two. Um, all of these tutorials are located at this address that's highlighted here at the top of the page. We're going to focus on tutorial one. So you've already started a terminal and I'll go back over here. Here is the terminal. I haven't, or the NX window, I haven't started a terminal within here yet so you've connected to a Linux server. To start a terminal you right click there and click on the terminal window. So here's my terminal window. Um, now the first thing you want to do if you're going to manipulate data, going back to this tutorial, is to get some data. So we have a bit of data that I've uploaded on the web page. If you click here, you can get the data. Um, it turns out that I have already uploaded this data. I uploaded it in a place within topographic tools and topographic data and then I have a whole directory tree and this is the data but you can download that yourself just remember where you put it okay so let's find this data so I remember that I put it into topographic tools so one thing in Linux that you can do you can um, list everything in your directory I have sort of large directory so there's masses of things here that are listed but I want to get into topographic tools so let's see if that directory is there so if I want to list look for something so list topographic tools um, I started by typing T-O-P-O -O, topo and then hit the tab key so in Linux you have autocomplete you can hit tab and it'll autocomplete different um, directories and things so is topographic tools there so that's just listing what's in topographic tools so I want to change into topographic tools so I type CD for change directories topographic tools okay now I have put that data into topographic data so I'll go into topographic data okay so let's ls let's see what's in here we have a folder called next map change into next map. I want to go to Scotland. So now we're in Scotland. Um, in fact I've got a bunch of files here that I've worked on before but just to show what we're doing I'm gonna get rid of all these files except for the original um, TIFF file. So let's remove a few of these files. I'm gonna remove everything that's a .dil file and remove everything that's a header file and I'll remove everything that's a XML file what we got left okay I'm also going to remove these drivers um, I'll download drivers later so we want to start everything from scratch here so all I'm left with is this TIFF DEM now what do we do with this TIFF DEM? we can look at what's in it so we can use GDAL to see what sort of format the data is in. So to do that, we use something called GDAL info. And then we just look at this DEM. Now again, I can autocomplete. And it gives me all sorts of information about what this raster contains. So it tells me what sort of file it is. So it's telling me the driver is GTIFF, so it's a GeoTIFF file. It tells me how big the raster is and it tells me all sorts of things about its coordinate system. Okay, it tells me the dimensions of this as well. So for our topographic tools we use a few different data formats, one of which is the BIL format. It's an NV um, binary format. So binary formats are much smaller than 
ASCII formats. ASCII formats, if you open the file, you can see all the numbers, whereas a binary format, um, that's all in ones and zeros, so you can't actually look at the data with the um, to, with just a text editor, but the files are much, much smaller. And our preferred file format is the this nvbill format. The code also takes float format, which is a different kind of format, but that format doesn't retain the georeferencing information, whereas the nvbill format does. So we're going to use the nvbill format. Okay, so let's go back to this tutorial. So We've started a terminal window. We've done that. We can see what the DEM contains using GDAL and Bill. So now what we want to do is we want to convert formats. There's lots of different um, formats, but what we want is we want to use GDAL Translate. It's a particular, um, it's, a, it's a part of GDAL that allows you to move between formats. Okay, so let's do this. So I pasted that in. GDAL translate. This flag tells you what you want the out file for, uh, format to be, and the keyword here is NV. So if you look at the tutorial, it'll tell you different types of formats, but in this case, we're going to use NV. And this file is the in file, and that file is the out file. Okay, let's just do this. So I return. Okay, so that was quite quick. Now if we do ls, we can see the new DEM. The new DEM has actually several files. The .bill file is the actual data. This thing, the header, contains georeferencing information, and this XML file also contains some georeferencing information. So if you want to see what's in it, you do gdal info again. And I can autocomplete, but because there's lots of things called my adder DEM, I just get the first bit, so I have to add the bill. And now we get the sort of same sort of information. Okay, so another thing about this is we need to make sure for our topographic analysis that this is in a projected um, coordinate system. So it turns out that in this case, we have things in the British National Grid. So you look here at the pixel size. It's a 5 by 5 meter pixel. Um, sometimes you have to convert from a geographic reference system, which is in latitude and longitude. So it's basically on a sphere. And for our analysis, you need to convert that to something that is projected. So in this case, the DEM is already projected. OK, so let's look. What else do we need to do here? We could clip the raster um, or merge the raster. If you want to do any of these sorts of things, you can just copy directly from the from this tutorial and paste it into your terminal window, but you're going to have to change the numbers and things in here. Okay, so one thing we could do is we could change the projection of our data. So let's change the projection into UTM coordinates. So what we'll do is, for example, we'll change the projection here into UTM coordinates. To change coordinates, you use GDAL warp. Now, in this case, I copied from the tutorial, but that's not actually, um, these are not the files we want. We want white adder, I believe it was called white adder DEM. Bill. And now we can change this to white adder UTM. And we don't want UTM zone 44 because this happens to be in Scotland. So you can look up where UTMs are by Googling UTM zones. 
and that will bring up a bunch of images of maps. You can view these images, and the UK is about here, so that's UTM zone 30. So in my terminal, I'm going to change this to UTM zone 30, and that'll run, and we can do GDAL info on that. So I forgot to rename this thing to so zone 30. Actually, let's just do that right now. Zone 30. Okay, so let's do GDAL info here. Okay. Dot build. And again, we've got the same DEM, it's the same size. Um, because it's been projected, it's got a slightly different pixel size, but you can fix that by telling it what pixel size you want and how to do that. That's in the oops, that is in the tutorial. So here you can fix the pixel size using this flag in GDAWorp. Okay, so we can just see what's in here. So we've got the original DEM in TIFF, and then we've got these two DEMs. Um, I can actually remove the ones that are misnamed. Or, let's see. So now we've got the DEM, we've got it in build format, and we've also got it projected into UTM.